What's up, nerds? It's Mr. Kowalchuk. Uh, you know I'm out of town today, so here's the lesson. We're doing 5.1 parallelograms. Hope you had a good weekend. And what do you call a quadrilateral in danger? You call it a parallelogram. Yes, yes, yes. Even though I'm hundreds of miles away, the dad jokes don't stop. All right, cool. Let's jump in here. So we took notes on this. We got the definition of a quadrilateral. So that's going to be a polygon with four sides and four angles. Okay. It, it, uh, the polygon also tells us that it has no curved sides either. So we know that it needs to be a polygon. And we also know it's got to have four sides and four angles. Quad, again, is going to mean four. Okay. Now the notation, we name these figures by their vertices. So in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to start with a point and go around in one direction. Doesn't matter what direction you go. It doesn't matter which uh, point you choose. So we could start with M and go this way, or we could start with M and go this way. It would be the same shape, but we can't skip around, right? So this would be called M, L, K, J, or it could be called um, J, K, L, M. There's a bunch of different names that we could call this particular polygon, right? But we cannot go like M to K to J to L. That wouldn't work. So M, K, J, L is not a viable name for this particular polygon. Okay, quadrilaterals. Let's keep rolling. We got our definition of a parallelogram. Now, a parallelogram is a special type of polygon. In this particular case, a parallelogram, quadrilateral, four-sided figure, four angles, four shapes, is a parallelogram if and only if, it's a definition, so it goes both ways, it has exactly two pairs of parallel opposite sides. Now, in this case here, we've got a diagram that says A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. This symbol right up here, it's a tiny little parallelogram. It means parallelogram, okay? So we see that we have two sets of opposite sides, therefore, that are parallel, so it's a parallelogram. Now we can read this two ways. If ABCD is a parallelogram, then AD is parallel to BC and AB is parallel to DC. Or we could say if the two sides are parallel, then it's a parallelogram because the definition, it goes both ways. These two are gonna be really helpful because we are gonna spend a lot of time proving things as parallelograms. So don't forget about that, okay? All right. Let's go down to our theorems about parallelograms. Next slide. Again, you should have notes taken on this already. So theorem 5.1 and 5.4. 5.1 is the first theorem. 5.4 is the converse. So this is parallelograms and congruent opposite sides. So a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if it has two pairs of congruent opposite sides. And that goes both ways. So we have congruent opposite sides and congruent opposite sides. That proves that it is, in fact, a parallelogram. Okay. Um, now, in the notes, there was a proof of what this looked like. So it was it's, a, it's kind of a paragraph proof. And some of you have been asking me, well, what is a, par a paragraph proof? So in this case, what we know is if we start with a parallelogram, then we'll call this A... B, C, and D. And then we're going to introduce a diagonal. Okay. Well, by definition, segment AB is parallel to segment CD, and BC is parallel to AD. Okay. That's our definition of a parallelogram. Okay. So we know that. Therefore, we can mark it up. Okay, so that's parallel. Great. Now we introduced segment AC by the line postulate. Yeah. And then next, we're going to say that we've got angles here. So I'm going to say angle one and angle two and angle three and angle four. And we know that angle one is congruent to angle four, as well as angle two is congruent to angle three because of the parallel lines giving us congruent alternate interior angles theorem. Right? 
So let me just mark those with uh, colors here. So we know that four is congruent to one. And we also know that two is congruent to three. And they're alternate interior angles and they both touch parallel lines here and the green ones touch here, okay? But now what we can do is we can say that AC is congruent to AC by the reflexive property. Okay. Now what we have is angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So our two triangles are congruent and we gotta be really careful with our congruency statement. So ABC is congruent to triangle CDA and that's side, angle, side. Yeah. And then finally, now what we can do is we can say AB is congruent to CD. And AD is congruent to BC by CPCTC. Okay. So now we can also show that our opposite sides in a parallelogram are congruent like that. Yay. Oh, wait, I forgot the. Okay. All right. So that's why we can say that the opposite sides are congruent to each other. Right, we did our definition already. So now let's go ahead and move on. We've got our three theorems of parallelograms here. So we already talked about opposite sides. <clears throat> now for the same basic reason, we can go back to that proof. And instead of proving the opposite sides congruent, we can prove the opposite angles congruent by the third angle theorem either one of those is gonna work. So the opposite angles in opposite corners are gonna be congruent. It's this one and this one. The one, the thing I love about this here, this theorem in particular, is that because it's a parallelogram, we can assume that this is roughly drawn to scale and that this angle looks obtuse. Therefore, this angle looks obtuse and it's gonna be congruent. Same thing with this one over here. We've got an acute angle and we have an acute angle right there. So those are gonna be congruent as well. So if we have a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are gonna be congruent as well. That's also super duper helpful, okay? And then the last theorem uh, for today, as well as the converse, is the parallelogram diagonals bisect theorem. We've got a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. That's our conditional. Then we have diagonals that bisect each other. Now, what that means is that the diagonals split each other in half, that this point right here bisects both of the diagonals, making this segment congruent to this segment and this segment congruent to this segment. We don't know if the diagonals are congruent to each other, um, but we just know that the point in the middle of the diagonals, the intersection of the diagonals, splits them both in half. Awesome, yeah? Okay, now, how do we abbreviate those? Well, we can abbreviate those. Some of you like the abbreviations, others don't. With this one, we can say that a parallelogram gives us congruent opposite sides. And then we can say down here, a parallelogram gives us congruent opposite angles. And then finally, we can say a parallelogram, that wasn't very tilted. Let's try again. There we go, that's better. Parallelogram gives us diagonals bisect, bisect theorem. Didn't have enough space for that one. So we can abbreviate those just fine if you want. If you want to remember the whole name, then please go ahead and do that. Study these, want to know these, want to make sure, okay? Now, in summary, this should also be in your notes. We're gonna, when I come back, we're gonna do this thing called a family tree, which is gonna be a note sheet that's gonna help us remember all these different things about the quadrilaterals. So that'll be helpful. But this summary sheet is really great because it summarizes visually everything that we've been talking about. So what we got? Well, first off, we know that if we have two sets of parallel sides, then ABCD is a parallelogram. This is the definition of a parallelogram, right? So that's what that one is. Then if we know that we have a parallelogram, then we have congruent opposite sides. So this one says, if we have a parallelogram, then we have congruent opposite sides. Okay, 
if we have a parallelogram, you're seeing a pattern here, then we have congruent opposite angles. Parallelogram gives us congruent opposite angles. And then here, if we have a parallelogram, I know, it's getting consistent, then we have diagonals boop, boop, that bisect each other. Parallelogram gives us diagonals bisect. Okay? That's the main idea for the whole lesson. All right, let's put this to work. Now, in this situation here, we've got three different problems, and you're asked to solve for the variables in each parallelogram. If you want to pause the video and solve these on your own, you can certainly do that. I'm going to start solving them in five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so let's zoom in here and know that for my first one, I have a parallelogram because it says each parallelogram. And I know that with my parallelograms, my opposite sides are going to be congruent to each other. Therefore, I've got two equations, 4w is equal to w plus 3. And I also have 2z plus 1 equals 4z minus 5. Subtract w, 3w equals 3, and w equals 1. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 2z from both sides. And I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Those cancel out, and those cancel out. 6 equals 2z, z equals 3. Yay. Okay. All right, let's go ahead over here. Now, in this particular case, I've got my parallelogram gives me congruent opposite angle theorem. So now what I'm going to do with this is I have to set my opposite angles equal to each other. So what I know here is that C equals B minus 10 and D equals B plus 10. But that doesn't help me because I have one, two, three variables and only two equations. So now what I need to do is I need to think a little bit more carefully about my parallelogram. So what I notice is that these two sides are parallel to each other. That works out really well, which is awesome. So the other thing that I can figure out is that if I have parallel lines and a transversal, what that tells me is that this angle and this angle are same side interior angles because they're inside of our sandwich and they're on the transversal. And same side interior angles are also supplementary. So therefore, B minus 10 plus B plus 10 add up to equal 180 degrees. And that's going to be really helpful. So now what I have is B minus 10 and plus 10. The 10s go away. So I have 2B equals 180 and B equals 90. So now I've solved for one variable. I have to go back and solve for the others. Well, C is equal to B minus 10. So then C is equal to 80 degrees. And then D is equal to, or just 80, sorry, because the degree symbol is already there, B plus 10. So D is equal to 100. Okay? So seeing those supplementary angles was really, really helpful. All right, next. Now I have a parallelogram with a diagonal. And this reminds me of my parallelogram gives me diagonals that bisect each other. So now I know that the two parts of the diagonals are congruent to each other, and these two parts are also. Well, if I look at this, this part and this part and this part and this part, with these two, I only have f as my variable. So I'm going to tackle that one first. I know that 5f minus 17 is going to equal 2f minus 5. Subtract 2f, subtract 2f. Therefore, I have 3f minus 17 equals negative 5. Add 17 to both sides, 3f equals 12, and f equals 4. Okay. Now I go back and I can solve this, where I know that f plus 2 is equal to g. So g equals 6. Okay. Oh, g equals 6. 
All right, so putting those theorems to use. Let's do one more together. Now, in this last example, what we have is we're asked to solve for X and Y in parallelogram A, B, C, D. Okay, so this gets a little bit more challenging, which gets fun. So let's take a look. Um, we have a parallelogram. This is 110 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and start labeling some stuff that I know. This is 110 degrees because it's vertical. This is 70 because it's supplemental. And this is 70 because it's supplemental also. All right, cool. So if I keep looking around, I see that this is 35 and this is 70. Well, together, 70 plus 35 adds up to 105. And then this triangle here, ABC, is equal to, excuse me, 180. So therefore, this angle right down here is going to be equal to 75 degrees. Because 180 minus 105 equals 75 degrees. So now I know that. Cool. All right. Well, now what we need to do is we need to figure out 5x and 3y. So now from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and determine what I've got. So I'm going to use a couple different ideas here. And maybe you have some suggestions about what you could do. That works out also. Um, so there's a couple different ways. I'll show you a couple different ways that we can solve this puzzle. The first off is by recognizing that this side and this side are parallel. Yeah. Therefore, this angle here and this angle here are alternate interior angles that are on a transversal. And because the lines are parallel, they're equal to each other. Therefore, 3y is equal to 75 degrees and y is equal to 25. Cool. Now, what we also know is, let me get a different color. We can also say that we also have alternate interior angles here and here because the pink touches the parallel and it touches the parallel here and the transversal between the two. So therefore, we also know that 5x equals 35 and x equals 70 because they're alternate interior angles. Now, that's one way to solve it. Another way to solve it would be to be looking at these two triangles here. So if we look at these two triangles here, we know that the 70 degree is, con is congruent. We also know that the bisector, the diagonals are bisected. So therefore this is gonna be congruent to that. And this is congruent to this, those two segments. So now if I look at this triangle here and this triangle here, I have side angle side congruent to side angle side. So I'm gonna label this point E and I'm gonna say, that triangle B, E, C is congruent to triangle, and I have to do it carefully, so at 35 to 70. So 35 to 70, or alternate interior angles that correspond, 5x to 70, so that's D, E, A, D, E, A. And from there, now I know what my corresponding angles are. I can see, if I didn't see this alternate interior angle thing, I can say that this angle here corresponds to this angle over there. And then I can get back to my place of 5x equals 35. And likewise, this angle corresponds to that. And I can also set up another equation, which says 75 equals 3y, and solve it that way. So there's a variety of ways, and that's not even the only two ways that you can solve these, but I just wanted you to see two different ways where you could solve it. Okay, now the other way that you could do it is you could also say that in this case here, that we've got, um, we have a triangle here that we can see the um, uh, the three angles. So I can say that 3y plus 5x plus 70 equals 180 degrees. Cool, great. So if I do that, then I know from one of these equations, if I had solved these before, I could say, let's say x is equal to seven. So then I get 3y plus five times seven, which is 35 plus 70, gives me 180. And then I have 3y, plus 105 equals 180, which gives me y equaling to 25. Okay. All right. So just a couple different ways to solve these. Um, that's it for the lesson today. So the rest of the class time is yours to uh, work on your three, or excuse me, 5.1 homework. And I will see you in a couple of days. Thank you for being kind and respectful.